in uh, my previous video, video I demonstrated um, a new 8-bit processor that I made using the wire wrap prototyping method. Um, they show the wires on the bottom of it. I removed the chips and I'll show you why in a minute. So I went ahead and uh, used the same schematics and made some printed circuit boards for the 8-bit processor. Um, this is the circuit board for the uh, ALU. Uh, this is the control logic board and that's the printed circuit board for the main board. So these three boards have the same circuit as the uh, wire wrap prototype, but this allows you to solder it together and to print up as many as you want uh, if your budget holds up. So here are the three boards that make up the processor uh, with the uh, integrated circuits plugged into sockets. This is the arithmetic logic unit board. Uh, this is the main board that has the multiplexers and registers on it. And this is the control logic board that has the logic circuits that interpret the instructions. So when I made these, I lined up the connectors. So the, the main board has a connector for the control board and for the arithmetic logic unit and the connectors for the arithmetic logic unit and for the control board line up with those so they can be stacked if you have the right connectors. So I did put a uh, connector on the arithmetic logic unit board so that it will uh, stack with the uh, with the main board and you can see how they would uh, how they plug in together like this. So um, I don't have one on the ALU, so I'm going to use a short ribbon cable for that, but uh, anyway, we will assemble these and have our 8-bit uh, processor. So here's the assembled processor, um, the three boards, the top board is the control board, and there are some extras on it. The um, control board has a uh, 2 megahertz crystal clock. It also has a RC slow clock and these switches here are a single step clock and you can choose the clock by the switches here and it has a reset switch on it as well. So you can see the uh, connector here where the where the control board plugs into the main board. On the back is the ribbon cable that connects the main board to the ALU board, which is on the bottom in this case. Now, this is just a processor. It doesn't have uh, any memory or input-output ports, so we need to connect it to uh, some kind of system board, and this is where you have some options. In my previous videos about my wire wrap processor prototype, I used a very what I call a clumsy adapter to connect it to a small 8-bit computer kit that I sell. This uh, is a nicer adapter that I made and uh, it connects the system connector on the 8-bit processor with a cable that has a 40-pin um, plug on here that can plug directly into the Z80 socket on the, uh, on the small computer. So the adapter plugs onto the system connector. I put a little piece of black tape on here because the uh, control board on top, uh, some of the contacts might touch the uh, soldered parts of this board. And so this plugs onto the uh, system connector. And then uh, this plugs into the uh, header on the bottom of the adapter and then you can put the ALU board back on top and uh, now the processor is ready to uh,
plug into the um, small Z80 computer. So here's the small Z80 computer configured to run with the Z80. So you can uh, remove the Z80 from its socket and uh, remove the ROM that has the Z80 code in it. Um, you need to replace it with um, a ROM that has some code that the processor understands. So I've got some test programs in here. And then you can uh, plug this in to the Z80 socket. Like so. And there's the uh, Z80 computer configured to use the 8-bit uh, processor as its processor. And just to demonstrate, here's a simple program that's a, a port reflector, mean, meaning anything that is on the uh, port switches will appear on the LEDs, so that program is at location 0012. So 0012. Then take it out of reset. And so immediately you see 12 on the port switches here. And if you change these switches, the processor will put whatever it's reading off these switches back onto the port. So there's another program we can run on the slow clock, which is just a simple counter that's at 001D. 001D, so now it's running the slow clock, so it'll take a while to count, but you'll see the output ports begin to do a binary count and very slowly as it's running on a very slow clock. So if we um, put it on the fast clock, it'll count, but it'll just be a blur, so you can't really see anything. However, there is a program that's a two-byte counter, but you can see, um, even on the fast clock, and this is at location 0025, so 002. So now you can see the uh, counting is it's a two byte counter, so you can see it counting high. So that shows the uh, processor taking the place of the Z80 in this computer system. Uh, you do have to have code that can be interpreted by the processor, though, of course. It, it's the, this processor is not a Z80, it has the same pinout, but it doesn't have the same machine code. So there's a machine code specific for this processor in the ROM that you see here. Now to make things more interesting, I made this single board Z80 computer that has um, 64K memory. Um, this computer is capable of running the CPM operating system and it has a uh, disk drive interface, um, a 2 megahertz clock, and a serial interface. Um, this one has a connector that I can use with a ribbon cable to connect directly to the 8-bit processor. Of course, you can also remove the Z80 and put in a ROM chip that has the appropriate programs, and you can use this adapter to, to plug in there also. And I'll um, assemble this with the uh, processor to make a stack of four boards that really represents what I think is the ultimate 8-bit processor, 64K memory computer that I'm going to use. So now I'll configure the system to run with this uh, 64K uh, computer serving as the system board. Um, so in order to do that, we remove the Z80. And the uh, ROM. And we'll replace the ROM with the uh, code that's appropriate to the 8-bit processor. This 
program has a monitor program in it, so we'll need to use the serial interface to interact with the computer. So the uh, system connector on the uh, main board is right here, and we use that to connect with the um, system connector on the system board. And I'll put this all together. Put the ALU back on. And we'll have a complete 8-bit computer in a little stack. I have brought the 8-bit processor system up to my desktop computer so we can uh, uh, run some programs on it and demonstrate it. So we can plug it into the uh, serial port of the desktop computer to get a uh, display and use the keyboard and display to communicate with the computer. So to operate the computer using the serial interface, we will start a terminal program. I'm using uh, Minicom in my uh, Linux computer here. And then we can um, plug the processor in to the 5-volt uh, power input on the on the main board and you can see the greeting message come up. Uh, now I'll switch to the computer window view. So here you see the greeting message and the commands that are available in the monitor program. Uh, the restart command just uh, restarts the monitor just so you know that it's alive. The uh, dump program will show you the contents of an area of memory. So if we look at uh, 0900 and hex, that's the beginning of the of user memory. Uh, it's full of garbage right now, but it displays a block of memory. The uh, load program will put uh, byte values into memory. So we can put bytes into that same area of memory. Uh, we can just put some zeros. And then if we dump that same memory area, you can see the zeros at the top of the block that we just put in there. To demonstrate the bload and run commands, I'm going to load a program into the computer that calculates the value of pi. Um, the window over here shows the program, the one the binary code is pi8.obj and I can load this into the computer over the serial port by using the Linux cat command. This is a command that just dumps file contents somewhere, usually used to read text files on the screen, but it will also dump binary data and I've redirected it to dump it to the serial port that the computer is connected to. So it's ready to go, so I'm going to use the bload command, which is 5. I'm going to put the program at 0900, the beginning of the user memory area. The number of bytes to load is the length of the program, 7734. And now it's ready to transfer, so I will execute the cat command. <clears throat> Takes a little bit of time, and uh, once the cursor goes back to the uh, menu display, we know it's in. Now I'll run it using the run command, which is 3, and the address is beginning of user memory. So this program does a numeric integration of um, a multi-sided polygon that's drawn inside uh, the unit circle. 
it uh, doubles the size each iteration, calculates the perimeter of the polygon, and then calculates a value of pi from that. It uses um, medium precision floating point arithmetic and uh, takes a while. This processor is not particularly speedy and uh, it's very simple, but it does work. You can see the values of pi uh, converging on the true value as the number of sides of the polygon increase. So it's just about finished. It takes about two minutes to do the whole calculation. I thought this would be a real good test of the processor's capabilities since it involves a lot of math and the processor seems to do pretty well with this. So um, that's about as far as it can get with the floating point routines that it has. Any more precision the floating point routines start to break down. So that's a demonstration of a simple 8-bit processor. If you are interested in building one, uh, getting the circuit boards or parts, let me know, and I can help you out on that. Thanks. Bye-bye.